Hallelujah. And I admit to myself. In the midst of my faithlessness, God's been faithful. My Lord. Amen. Amen. Boil it down, Boil it down. When I turned my back on him, yeah. he was faithful. Hallelujah. Boil it down. Boil it down. Hallelujah. But I did what Larry wanted to do. Because there's a difference between what Larry wants to do and what Pastor wants to do. Amen. He's been faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. Over the highways and the byways, he's been faithful. faithful. Through danger seen and unseen, he's been faithful. faithful. When I was sick and I thought I wasn't going to get well, he was faithful. faithful. So we got a right to worship him on today because he's been faithful to us. Does anybody else have that testimony? You guys are praise up in here, up in here. I thought we were in the house of the Lord. Let's magnify him in the house of the Lord. And let's worship him in the house of the Lord. Because he's worthy. He's good. Come with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, beginning with the 8th verse. Amen. Second Corinthians. Amen. Chapter number twelve. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians. Chapter number twelve. Beginning with verse number eight from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. Amen. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. Amen. That is why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. For a few moments on today, I want to talk to you from the subject breakable yet unbroken. Breakable yet unbroken. Amen. And for a thought, I want to give you is that even though we are fragile in the natural, that our strength comes because we are firmly rooted in Christ. Uh -huh. And for a thing, I want you to grasp that it is God who makes the way. Amen. It is God that is the way. And it is God who is the vehicle 
that securely surrounds us as we travel along life's narrow way. We are breakable. Yet, we are unbroken. As those who are doing our best to be dedicated to the true and living God. In the midst of the high points that we experience while engaging ministry, we face situations that push us to the brink, Amen. mentally and spiritually. Amen. In this life, even in our times of happiness, we deal with situations that have the ability and capability to totally break us. Pull us down. Take us out. All right. When we are simply striving to do what is right and honorable in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Are y'all with me this morning? All right. As ambassadors for Christ who wake up daily with the desire to be committed to the cause. We deal with turmoil. Many times, this turmoil is not our fault. And it did not originate with us. However, in the midst of dealing with the turmoil, we must continue to deny ourselves. Take up our cross and follow Christ. Think of the sense that we do this with an attitude of humility, a posture of reverence, and trust in God as we submit to Him, allowing Him to lead us spiritually and guide us through the confines of this world. When we encounter things, that are contrary to our productivity, we must re simply remember that we are servants of the true and living God. And it is He who has called us and is continually calling us and He promised that if we abide in Him, He would never leave us nor forsake us. Do I have a church up in here? Amen. The songwriter says, he abides in me. Yes. He gives me victory. Yes. In times of weakness, he abides in me. Amen. He gives me victory. In the aftermath of insults, he abides in me. He gives me victory. Yes. When we endure hardships, he abides in me. He gives me victory. When we're being persecuted, he abides in me. He gives me victory in the midst of trouble. He abides in me. He gives me victory. Just keep the faith. And never cease to pray. Just walk upright. Call him new day or night. He'll be there. Amen. And there's no need to worry. Somebody help me out. Because God never fails. Like Paul, we, we, we experience high points in our ministries. We experience high points on our job. We have high points with our families. However, these high points are only through the power and the grace of Almighty God. Amen. I think we can all admit 
in the midst of those high point brothers slaying them all. We also endure suffering. <laughs> we have common ground here. Because right now, we are all enduring something. Amen. Amen. We are all enduring something that is causing us distress in some way, shape, or form. And this uncomfortable feeling is calling us to call on the name of the Lord with great intensity, Deacon Smith. Understand that I was suffering. And times of despair are the times when we, when we forget the most growth and elevation in God. Amen. Why? Because during our low points, we learn to lean and depend on God with great humility. Amen. And we are more receptive to him because of the uncomfortable state that we find ourselves in. Amen. When we grasp the fact that we are servants of the true and living God, and God alone is the one that will deliver us out of the distress we are in. See, he makes a way out of no way. He's the bridge that brings us through, and he ushers in the victory that any time that we want to take credit for. So we can't stick our chest out and say it's all about us because we know that God brings us through. We may get frustrated along life's narrow way, but we can rejoice because God is bringing us through. Even though we deal with disappointment and doubt, we comprehend that it is God that brings us through. We may be dealing with isolation in the midst of striving to be in the fellowship, but we must grasp spiritually and naturally that it is God that brings us through. Amen. And it's in Him Amen. that we live. Yes. Amen. We move. Amen. And we have our being. Yes. Amen. Thank you. The Apostle Paul penned the book of 2 Corinthians, which is actually Deacon Smith, the fourth letter. <laughs> yeah. to the Corinthians. Amen. All right. The overall theme of 2 Corinthians is the relationship uh -huh. between suffering and the power of the Spirit yeah. in Paul's apostolic life and his apostolic ministry. Amen. All right. We also understand that Jesus Christ endured suffering Amen. and we must understand that we too will endure suffering due to our relationship with him. Right. Therefore endurance while we deal with adversity and Christ-like behavior are both made possible yeah. by the grace of God and modeled by Paul and this is the greatest display of God's presence, God's power, and glory to the world who needs God. All right. We must understand the fact that when we are in Christ, Sister Joyce, we are a new creation. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. But when the old things have passed away, and all things have become new, our mandate is not that we live like our old selves. But that we live for others. And we live, Deacon Smith, so that we can live again. Yes. Are y'all with me on this morning? Amen. We also 
must understand that a new creation yeah. expresses repentance through maturity and holiness. Yeah. We should be persistently pursuing maturity and holiness daily. Amen. When we look at the text, and what we're going to do this morning, we're going to look at it contextually. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. When we look at things in the proper context, yes, yes, we look at what comes before yes, and what comes after. All right. So we're going to look at the text on this morning contextually. While beginning in chapter 10, we have Paul defending his authority. As he defends his authority, he appear, appeals to the Corinthians with gentleness and the kindness of Christ. All right. What does that mean? When we appeal to other folk, we need to love. appeal to them, yes, thinking words, in love, Amen. in gentleness, and in the kindness of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Understand. They thought he was a man who had adapted his actions and responses to take advantage of them. All right. And he was only outspoken to them when he was far away. But he let them know that assuming that he was nervous because he was in their presence was the farthest thing from the truth. And if he had something that needed to be said, he was going to say it. Amen. He let them know that as God's children, we don't deal in warfare as those who don't know Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We simply rely on God, not carnal weapons. To knock down the strongholds Amen. that we face daily. Amen. And we stand on God's principles as we engage the obstacles that keep people from knowing about Him. Amen. It is Paul's desire that the Corinthians know Christ and become fully committed. It is my desire. All right. That you know Christ and that you become fully committed. He lets the Corinthians know as we move forward that the, the, the authority that God had given to him was so he could build them up. All right. Not tear them down. Paul also tells them that it is God. In God alone that gets credit for the work. Amen. Not us. And what you say about yourself means nothing in the midst of God's work. See, it's what God says about you that makes the difference. And it's what God says about you that really matters. Paul also lets the Corinthians know that he cares about them. Yeah. He loves them. And due to the fact that he loves them, he wants the best for them. When you love somebody, you want what's best for them. His desire is not that they be deceived or lured away from the purity of their love of God. He basically tells them, you can't eat everybody's cooking. You can't sit in everybody's Bible class. You can't go to everyone's revival. Yeah. Why? You can't listen to everyone's teaching and preaching because everyone is not rooted and grounded in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. See, the Corinthians were entertaining other preachers that were not teaching consistent truth about Christ. Come on, God. And Paul asked them, 
If you can go to their services, why can't you come to the ones that I give? If you can put up with them, why can't you put up with me? See, at least I know what I'm talking about. At least I'm being honest with you because I love you. I'm not trying to deceive you or get a love offering. I've never been a burden to you. I've always tried to keep things open and honest between us. All right. Okay. Paul, Deacon Smith gives a sarcastic rant. And he gives them his resume. He lets them know that he was of the pure race Abraham. Amen. He was a servant of Christ Amen. who was jailed more often than the preachers you love to entertain. He had been, been beaten up more than he can remember. He had been near death. Amen. He had been flogged, stoned, and he had been beaten with rods. He had been shipwrecked and lost at sea. He had struggles with his colleagues. He had been forsaken by his friends. Yet he worked and he continued to work in excellence. Sometimes, even as an apostle of Jesus Christ, he felt hopeless. Even as a disciple of Jesus Christ, he felt desperate. He had been in countless dangerous situations throughout his ministry. And it was all legislated for the gospel's sake. Amen. But after all of that, he still had to come back to the church <laughs> and deal with the personalities and daily pressures and anxieties of being the pastor. All right. All right. That's a job. <laughs> Y'all with me this morning? He simply lets them know Deacon Woods, I'm going to brag about myself. I'm simply going to talk about my weakness. For my Bible studies, this weakness is the struggle and the humiliation that Paul endured that made him like Jesus. Paul didn't boast about the things God had shown to him. He didn't boast about the things God had done for him. Because he didn't want the people to think that he had the big head. He wanted them to see him for who he was. Hallelujah. But Ray, we talked about this countless times. In his weakness, God allowed Paul to have a thorn in his flesh. Amen. In his flesh. Yeah. The thorn in his flesh grounded him and humbled him. See, it grounded him and humbled him because it kept Paul as it keeps us from becoming proud. All right. Amen. The thorn in our flesh keeps us from thinking we are more than what we are. Hallelujah. By showing us that we must still lean and depend on Jesus, even though we are children of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. He asked God to remove this discomforting agent in his life. And not once, not twice, but three times. Amen. God simply told him. My grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. And my strength is made perfect. Or my power works best in the midst of your weakness. Hallelujah. If we're sick, God's grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. If we're dealing with struggles, Hallelujah. 
God's grace is sufficient. If they don't like you, God's grace is sufficient. I thought we had a church up in here, but God's grace is sufficient. If you ain't got no food on your table, God's grace is still sufficient. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what they call you. God's grace is still sufficient. So Paul boasts about his weakness or humiliation he endured that made him like Jesus. Simply so the power of Christ could work through him. It made Paul humble. Now remember what Jesus said, blessed out of me. Though they shall inherit the earth. This is why in our times of weakness, we can take pleasure in our relationship with him. In our times of discomfort, we can take pleasure with our relationship with him. When folks try to come for us, we are to take pleasure in our relationship with him. When we suffer for the sake of Jesus Christ, we can rejoice. We are to take pleasure in our relationship with him. Because when I'm weak, uh -huh. I'm strong. So how should we respond when we acknowledge that our weakness becomes our strength because of our relationship with Christ? Amen. Number one, I want you to listen to me closely. We quit worrying about what we can't do. And we get, begin to appreciate a God that can accomplish more than we can imagine. Amen. Number two, we cease allowing what we cannot control to control us. Amen. And we simply focus on the fact that God's grace is sufficient yeah. and God said that's all we need. Yes. Amen. Amen. Last but not least, in our weakness, God's strength shows up. When we acknowledge we are inadequate and, a, and, a, and simply allow Christ to take over as we engage ministry. Yeah. Understand, life has a way of getting us there that we find ourselves unbroken. Mm. Struggle simply does not discriminate that we find ourselves unbroken. Uh -huh. Unfair judgment seems to find us that we find ourselves unbroken. Problems seem to show up when they are not desired. Yet, my brothers and my sisters, we find ourselves unbroken. Yeah. Sickness comes when we least expect it. Yet, we find ourselves unbroken. The songwriter says, Jesus knows all about our struggles. Yeah. He will guide till the day is done. Yeah. There is not a friend right. like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No, not one. There is not a friend like Jesus. Hallelujah. When life tries to break you, there is not a friend like Jesus. When despair tries to take you out, yeah. there is not a friend like Jesus. When the enemy tries to turn up in your life, yeah. there is not a friend like Jesus. Hallelujah. When the folk talk secretly about you, there is not a friend like Jesus. Not a friend. When the folk talk publicly about you, there is not a friend like Jesus. When the weapon is formed against you, there is not a friend 
I don't have to tell you how long I pastored Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Yes, I don't have to tell you how many sermons I preach. Yes, Just know that I stand with Christ. Amen. For Christ I live. Yeah, yeah. And for Christ I left yeah. and I die. Uh -huh. See, when I boast about myself, people think it's about me. Yeah. But see, it ain't about me. No. It's about the Christ that's within me. God will. I'm just a fragile pot. God will. But the Bible says that He's alive. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. God. And we are the clay. And see, if we find ourselves broken, it's up to us to allow Him to put us back on the potter's wheel. Because guess what, Sister Joyce? The power of us will put you back together again. There's one thing I want to put you back together again. What's the other thing when God wants to put you back together again? See, He wants to put us back together again so we can be vessels that are ready to be used, that are fit for service and equipped and ready to go. So we don't boast about what we do. Jesus. We boast about the God that we do. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to say that again. We don't boast about what we do. Jesus. We boast about a God that do it. Jesus. Lord, 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 oh, Jesus. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. We all going through something. Yeah. Now, Jesus. My Jesus. But we're not broken. My Jesus. We all have hurt. Lord Jesus. But Brother Brown, we're not broken. We all have experienced disappointment. But we're not broken. Now I'm going to tell you this and I'm going to leave you alone. God wants to use you. God wants to use this church. Amen. Amen. And even though we're breakable, we're unbroken. My Lord. Because we're standing. Yeah. And we're building Hallelujah. on the solid rock. Uh -huh. So in our weakness, Amen. God's power comes forth. Yeah. Amen. And even when I'm weak, Sister Lisa, I'm strong. Yeah. I'm strong. Yeah. I'm strong. Yeah. Point to yourself and say, I'm strong.